Hey guys, Dave from Nerd Rocky, four nerds, by nerds, hanging out with these nerds. I'm Ted. I'm Ryan. And today we have a GM91 from Jeremy. Uh, how to introduce these NPCs. If you have a GM911, you can submit it to nerdarchy at gmail.com. Just put GM911 in the subject, or you can head over to our forums to the GM911 section. So here's the setup. Uh, Jeremy's going to be running, I believe it's going to be a one-shot or only a couple of sessions to fill in for the regular DM. And he's got this idea where the party is going to be competing against a group of NPCs uh, and they're all no, hunting. no. It's not even that the, the. I don't think they're aware of the other NPCs. Well, right? they might not be aware, okay. of them, but they're still competing. If they're the quarry is the same. Okay. They're they're all after the same forest demon that is corrupting the woodlands, mm. and what he wants to do is um, basically have the forest demon paralyze his PCs, have the NPCs swoop in, uh, slay the forest demon, and then uh, discuss their elaborate backstories why within earshot of the PCs. All right, all right. So so. So, all right. So the the PCs are hunting this demon. They get frozen, so they the players get to do nothing for the duration while the GM runs the combat entirely by themselves. Um, sounds like the DM is having all the fun of playing the role playing game by themselves. The players are there watching, watching. witnessing Whoa. this, um, and then eventually each five five NPCs. They, they monologue to, to one another, so you hear all this. And so as a player, you get to do nothing. Now, what part of this sounds fun as the player of this all game? Right. Now, what what, <laughs> the, the, pre the premise of his GM911 was how do I introduce a bunch of NPCs? How, how with do long I, backstories. With, with long backstories. He says they're important. Um, so, so how does he get the information to the players without it going on and on and on? So I think what he's got going, he, you need to think about it a different way. The NPCs should never swoop in and and steal the glory. Your players are the star of the show. All right, like it's it's like the cast of Buffy. The cast of Buffy is not undone by outdone by some other guys that come in and like then the show focuses on another show. Like maybe it goes to Angel with David Boreanaz. That doesn't happen in the midst of a Buffy episode, right? Your 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 players are the star cast of the show. And what what you're doing is just it's just not good dungeon mastering when you overtake with the player's place. So I would say like if if these guys either your your PCs need to swoop in and save the day from these guys For these being people. paralyzed. Yeah, put them in the opposite and uh, and, and ad or additionally have them come in, break the paralysis, and they and they take the creature down together. Now to answer the question as to how to handle a group of NPCs, I always pick wh whoever is going to, in my opinion, as as a DM, be the strongest face character. That person is going to lead the scene. And I've done this in, in several different situations in my game. You know, when, when you were at your, uh, your house and your father and your uncle was there, the uncle took over the conversation. I wasn't trying to play both. When um, Scott's character was going to the council, I put Lyndon's character as the as the forefront and just had the council kind of be silent in the background uh, unless something pertinent would come up where they call, they called to a specific NPC or an NPC had to had to step forward I, I don't want to bounce around having multiple NPCs involved in a conversation as a DM it can get confusing for the players it can be like well who's talking again how did he know this oh wait he wasn't the one that said that I always think it's best to just have one character doing the talking, and as far as the combat, it's either got to be a joint thing or your PCs have to be the heroes. You can't, you can't swoop in and save the day with a whole bunch of NPCs. So, so also too, think about popular media in that um, when when a book's ad adapted, which is usually a much longer work, right? In uh, film and television, a lot of times what happens is they tend to merge some of these characters that are similar enough into one character, like. 
Game of Thrones or something else, like they might take three characters and mesh that, the storylines and plot lines of that those three characters yeah, they, into they, one character. They did that with Lord of the Rings. Exactly, with the movies and, and this and that. Like so instead of five NPCs, could you deal with one or two? You could you do get all the things that kind of matter into one or two and really like it, unless the, the the NPCs are going to hook into a broader storyline further out, which is like a one shot essentially. So unless that's like going into the game world and creating like the next adventure, it doesn't really matter. Like you're just like write a short story um, or or start writing a book if you want to give that much detail. The, so it, the problem is you're Spider Man three in it. Yeah, you're trying to have too many plots going on at the same time. Um, and the impression I got is it's going to be either a short arc or a one shot. So yeah. you don't. You don't have a lot of room, and you know I find anytime you just dump a lot of information on the players, most of it's going to fall to the wayside because it's too, it's going to it's going to be too much to take in, and you know at a certain point you 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 us as the DM are talking, their eyes glaze over, like you, you know you you not, you want to engage your players with dialogue and not talk at them. You want to talk to them. So and then also too, when it comes from writing, right? Um, was it show don't tell? Right, mm -hmm. so in actions like as GM, you literally have maybe two minutes of you monologuing before your players are gone. Right. Like really, so, so find out why why those NPCs are important. What 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 is the reason that their information is there that needs to get trans needs to get to the players, and find another way than having them talk to each other. I, I don't think that's... Yeah, it, like you said, it's confusing. I think it's weird as the DM to talk to them. I have a conversation with myself. Yeah, they might. if somebody else who's not a gamer hears you, they might haul you away to like, <laughs> yeah. a nice little cell with, with padded walls. So, uh, and like, what purpose does this serve? You yeah. know, again, like, you, you know, you're supposed to be creating the story with the players, and, you know, if you're just monologuing to them and they're the spectators, well, that's... It's not really fun, and it's not cooperative at all. Like, like, what's the end goal there? Like, you know, you didn't tell us that part. You, you just said it was important to introduce all these NPCs and get their backstories out. But, but for for the one shot, like, how important could it possibly be? The, you're, we're only going to encounter these NPCs this so one time. Unless he's spoken yeah. to the DM and gotten information that's leading to a grander a, arc, a, a grander arc, yeah. which we which we don't know, Jeremy. Um, so unless that's the case, do, do it, Ryan says. Tr trim, yeah. this, trim this down to the important stuff being about one or two of these characters. Um, merge some things to, together. Let the PCs let be the focus the hero be here. on the PCs. You, yeah. you, that, that's the important factor. That the PCs either need to bring down the demon or they need to cooperate, cooperatively bring down the demon after they've rescued the other party. And then they can celebrate in victory afterwards and discuss all of these things, and you can get into all that info at the victory celebration because you took down the thing. And, so, and also, too, because who as GM really wants to run a horde of NPCs? Like, to me, that's not fun. Well, So, if, so when we're talking with Hardy, too, like this could, again, be just one or two NPCs. So to, to, to speak to Jeremy, like, if you want to do five... You can, but not, and it has to be a longer arc. And and the other thing is, like you know, if you look at any kind of media, you don't get all the story at once. You never get all the story at once. So you know, if it was a longer arc and you want to introduce the, these five NPCs, you know, you could have you know different encounters with your players where it they, slowly comes. They out. could be reoccurring characters, and every every time they show up, you learn a little bit more about them. And yeah. like, oh, why didn't you tell me that we had this thing in common? Ha 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 ha! You know, it's just, yeah. it's an awesome thing to tell. And that one little tidbit it's going to re be remembered to that character that has something in common with it or something that they're diametric opposites but, of. but again like the most important thing is get that back and forth you know interact with your players don't you don't just you know spew spew mo monologues and dialogues at them you know make let them engage with the backstory I, that you want to present i mean the the, the paralyzed party it's like literally creating a captive audience. Like, <laughs> like oh, your characters can't go anywhere, so you're just gonna listen to this right now. That's what's gonna happen. And also, too, it's like, how do they get paralyzed? Are you just saying they're paralyzed? Yeah, paralyzed? like there's roles. Like they get a chance. Like it's kind of BS if they just oh they just instantly fail. Like no, this is a game about chance. The dice. There's a five percent chance that just about anything can happen on the dice. 
Including passing the saving throw. So, yeah. like, just just kind of, like, I rule the table and this is what's going to happen. Like, it's it's not setting yourself up to having a fun experience with your gaming group. Right. Right? So, the, the idea is you're going to want you're, you're going to want your players to enjoy you as a DM so that if if this if the regular DM has to step out again that they're going to be like oh Jeremy we you know we really liked your adventure last time can you step in so that we don't miss a session this month or this week or whatever have you so yeah, work work with your players, not against them or or at them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which it almost sounds like. So pretty much that's it. You know, remember it's a cooperative story. As the GM, we have to share it with the players, and the players have to share it with us. As the GM, keep that in mind. Uh, you guys, let us know what you think in the comments below. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. You can head over to uh, nerdarchy.com and hang out on the forums. You can also patronize us in a good way over on Patreon. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.